Welcome back to part four of the steering wheel restoration project. This is going to be our final project and that is going to be restoring the existing leather on the Mustang steering wheel. Again, this is a 2005 to 2009 steering wheel, but a lot of these techniques can be used on some of the newer versions as well. So let's take a look at what we're going to be needing today to get this project done. I've made uh, slight changes in how I was going to do this. Um, I have a kit and let me get the box out. Um, this is the kit that I got, uh, the Leather Repair Pro, Complete Professional Leather and Vinyl Repair Kit. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh. Uh, so all I need out of this is just a few things. Uh, in it, of course, we're going to have two things. This is going to be the leather dye. Um, they come with a whole bunch of different colors, but black is the one that we're going to be using. Uh, they do have the leather adhesive. Originally, I was going to use the super glue, but this is de designed specifically for leather, so I'm going to give this a try. Uh, of course, we're going to have the alcohol preps. Uh, this is my own and the two that came with it. I do have a whole bunch of extras available uh, in case I do need it. They only provided one little uh, 800 grit sandpaper disc, uh, but I've got a whole bunch more, so I've got a, a bigger one that I'm actually going to use, and I'm going to do the entire steering wheel with that. And let's see, two other things here. Uh, the applicator sponge. Uh, you can also use a paintbrush if you want, but that's there, so I'm going to apply the glue using one side, and then I'll do it with the, um, the dye on the other. But more interesting is this final piece. I don't know if you can see it or not. This is a textured uh, piece here and what I will do is lay this texture onto the steering wheel when I dye it. Uh, so we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Now the steps that I'm going to use here quite simple. I'm going to start off and I'm going to clean the entire steering wheel, get some of the grease off, and that'll just be a quick uh, cleaning. Then I'll start to take the sandpaper and I will again sandpaper the entire steering wheel here, get that all smoothed out, find out where the particular um, defects are, and see if I can get some of the bumps and bruises knocked down. After that, anything, if there's any uh, gouges, uh, any dents, or what have you, I'm going to use the leather adhesive to actually fill it in. Uh, then I will do another light sanding, another light cleaning with uh, more alcohol pads, then from there, I'll take the, uh, the dye, which is actually very thick, and I'm going to do multiple coats. I'm going to do uh, multiple layers, and probably at the second or third layer is when I'm going to actually use this. Uh, when it's about 70 or 80% dry, I'm going to just start, I'm going to rip that off and I'll take it and go around uh, just like this to lay texture into the dye and then let this puppy cure and that's all it's going to be to get this looking pretty much brand new so let's begin um, we're going to start with a quick cleaning and I'm going to speed this up and put some music behind it. OK. 
Okay, so I did um, some light sanding on this, and surprisingly, there's really not a whole lot of deep damage, and most of it, if not all of it, has been taken out by this sanding. I am not seeing anywhere where, well, maybe there. I need to really um, patch it. I mean, I guess there's some spots here that are a little bit rough that maybe I'll put some of that glue on and um, kind of go from there. But overall, this wheel was in exceptional shape. Um, so let me uh, get a tack cloth here and um, get some of this cleaned off because it's definitely um, a little bit of a mess here. So we'll tack cloth this. Okay. You can definitely see where in the leather Let's get that lined up a little bit here. See if you can see. You can definitely see where the leather has been worn pretty smooth. The texture is gone. So that's what we're going to try and, um, and replace here. But overall, again, there's no major issues with the leather at all. Ford definitely uses a, a fine leather. Uh, I'm trying to figure what I want to do at this point. Whether I'm going to just smooth it on and see what fills. And I think that's what I'm going to try and do. Oops. Let's see. This seems to be the worst area here person definitely was a eight and four hand position driver yeah that's that's where most of the wear is There you go. Uh, did a couple quick coats on this, and we're gonna see how this sets up. I'm gonna let it cure for a couple hours. I'm gonna come back, and I think somewhere here, I have some. Yep, here we go. I have some 3,000 grit sandpaper. So that's the uh, the 3,000, and I'm gonna give it just a real light touch on that. Uh, with that sandpaper and then uh, we'll use the other side of the sponge uh, maybe and uh, start getting some dye on and I'm going to try and do about three coats of dye and on that final one as I said just before it uh, it sets up completely I'll take this and start laying it on and hopefully add a little bit of uh, texture back and by that time the pieces that I completed yesterday that are currently curing in the sun they will be ready to be put back on and this wheel will be done so we'll be back to start the light sanding and the final dyeing and we're back uh, this was an interesting process I took some uh, 8,000 was it 8,000 uh, 400 and 3,000 sorry about that uh, 400 and 3,000 grit sandpaper and I worked my way around trying to get everything as smooth as possible. I did have some issues over here in the four o'clock uh, handhold position. I'm sorry this was actually okay it was in the uh, the eight o'clock and I still have a few issues here uh, but otherwise everything else looks pretty good 
Now, what I'm going to attempt to do now is start to die the steering wheel with the leather die, and we'll see how this starts to come out. I plan on doing a number of small, or I should say light uh, layers, and then build up the thickness on them. And once I have it built up, I'm going to add texture in the end. Yeah, I've got some issues over here for sure, unfortunately. But it does seem to be going on fairly evenly. So let me complete this and we'll speed things up now. Okay, so this is the first coating, and the color came out pretty good, um, kind of even, but you can definitely tell that it's been dyed. Um, it'll be interesting when I do the second coat, um, and I'm going to lay it on a little bit thicker. Now, one of the things that you can do is you can take a hair dryer and dry that, but being that I'm bald, I don't have a hair dryer. And dummy me, I should have wore the rubber glove, didn't even think about it. So I'm going to try and use some lava, uh, lava gel to get this off. And uh, hopefully I'm not going to have black fingers for a few months. So we're going to let this dry and then uh, see what we can do. But this is a problem area here. And I've got to figure out what I'm going to do if we can't uh, correct that. We're coming around to the final step of the process, and that's going to be texturing. Uh, if you noticed in the previous clip, what I wound up doing was uh, taking the sponge and dabbing it so that I didn't get any patterns, even though I still see some sneaking through. I've let this dry a little bit, and then it's probably about 70-80% dry. And now what I'm going to try and do... is give it some texture and see how that works. Not sure, I might have let it dry a little bit too much. I might have to do another coat, I'm not sure. This was my problem area coming up, and I'm hoping that the additional sanding and thick coat kind of beat it. Okay, there you go. Uh, that is it. I still see a little problem area there. We'll see how this dries out. Uh, I'm going to put a little more pressure there, see if I can get some pattern. But I'm going to let this dry for the next few hours and see what it looks like. Um, <clears throat> all things considered, it's all right. Uh, I'm not quite sure yet. It may wind up being that I'm going to go get another uh, leather cover and just stitch on a new one. but. I really want to do a restoration and see how this comes out. I may try and do some touch-ups uh, before I conclude this video, but let's see what happens in the next couple hours, and we'll be back. 
Okay, and here you have it. I went back and I actually took the sponge and did a couple more coats of the dye and I just went back to uh, the stippling and going around and trying to get it even. Now there's a slight sheen to it and I'm almost tempted to want to uh, put a matte spray on it, but I think I'm gonna forego that for now. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm still up in the air on that, but overall, uh, all the defects are pretty much gone. There's still some unevenness, um, but I don't think it's all that bad. It has almost a slight sandy view, so let me see if I can get that close. Uh, the light's kind of uh, giving it a, a weird effect, but from my viewpoint, it actually looks pretty good. So let's do this. Let's take the uh, covers that we did in the previous video and let's mount them. And they just fit right into place. And I let these sit out in the sun for a number of hours so that they would cure. I might be putting that in upside down. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, maybe not. There we go. Snapped in the place. Let's get that to snap into place. There we go. Wow, that actually looks really good. So there you have it. Uh, this is the finished wheel. I'll probably pop these off and I wanna polish these up a little bit. But otherwise, this is what a refreshed steering wheel looks like. And uh, it came out well. It came out really well. So that's it for this video. I appreciate you uh, hanging along with this and make sure you like, make sure you subscribe and I'm gonna have a whole lot more videos along the way. So take care and together, let's just keep wrenching things and have that blood, sweat and gears.